What's going on guys? My name's Theo Atrix and welcome to a new tips and tricks video. In this one, I'll be going through 10 tips that I can guarantee that you don't know about. If you're a high level player or very experienced, you may know a couple of them, but even then you won't know all of these. Let's get into it. At low fi making levels, the XP rates can be pretty slow because you spend a lot of time waiting for your character to light the logs. Even when you do light one, you still can't chain light the logs and your character stops each time to try and light the next one. If you use a fire lighter on the logs, your character doesn't go through the animation of trying to light them even at level 1 fire making. So this allows you to get really fast XP rates at a low level at least 3 times as fast. The next tip is in the chambers of Zeric. When you're fighting Ulm, at least one of the players in your team needs water spells to clear the wall of fire on the flame phase. Well, if you forget your water spells, you can use a vial of water on the wall to put the flames out. It consumes all of the water from the vial, so statistically though, you're better off taking an extra brew and just accepting the damage than healing with the brew. But this is still a very interesting mechanic to know about. The next tip is useful for iron men or players that are looking to make ultra compost themselves. When you're harvesting an allotment patch, if you use the ingredient on the compost bin on the same tick as when you're harvesting the patch, your character will harvest and fill the compost bin at the same time. This can save a decent chunk of time on your farm runs, although it does take a bit of getting used to to get the timing to work. This video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN is a leading provider of private networking. Using a VPN has countless benefits. Most importantly, your internet browsing becomes completely anonymous and encrypted. In the USA and various other countries around the world, internet providers are legally allowed to sell your browsing information to advertising companies. With a VPN, all of this information is not accessible by your provider. You can also access websites that aren't usually available in your country. And I use ExpressVPN to access the USA version of Netflix. Because on the Australian version, a lot of shows aren't available, like my personal favourite, Breaking Bad. With most VPNs, your internet speed gets reduced, leading to far slower browsing. Well, ExpressVPN uses the best servers out there, and your internet speed is barely affected whatsoever. By using my link in the description, you can get yourself three months of ExpressVPN for free. So if you want to stay secure on the internet, be sure to check it out. Thanks to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video. A few months ago, Jagex stopped the white portal from removing your skull and also removed the mechanic from entering and exiting the duel arena that removed your skull. By entering and quickly exiting the gauntlet in Prifdinus, your skull is instantly removed. But the best way to remove your skull is by having monsters and traps in your player owned house dungeon. By dying in your house, your skull is taken away, but you do need to have a throne room with a lever to turn on challenge mode, otherwise you won't take any damage from the monsters and traps. So every time you want to remove your skull, you enter your house, quickly go and pull the lever, then proceed to the dungeon to die. Doing this is slightly better than the gauntlet since it's a lot closer than running to the minigame and also you don't need to bank all of your items. I talked about this tip in one of my recent tips and tricks videos, but this one's really useful and a lot of players still don't know about it. When you're at the tithe farm, it's pretty common for some of your patches to die if you aren't focused enough. Well, you can actually guarantee that you get 100 fruits per game, no matter what happens. If you drop the fruits outside the door, exit the minigame, then grab more seeds and re-enter the minigame, you can come back in and grab the fruits that you dropped earlier. It's really important to know that your fruits will only remain on the ground if there's someone else in that instance. If no one else is in that tithe farm instance, it resets and your fruits disappear. Doing this trick allows you to get over 100 fruits, but depositing any fruits after you've deposited 100 will not give you any XP or points. So yeah, this tip is extremely useful for getting your farming outfit or any of the other rewards from the minigame. 
The next one is from the recent Ferox Enclave update. The Ferox Enclave is now closer to the Abyss for runecrafting than the Edgeville Bank, which was previously the best. You're now better off using a Ring of Dueling to teleport there and running from the Enclave to the Zamorak Mage to train at the Abyss. Next to the bank at the Enclave, there's also a Restoration Pool that can restore your run energy, which is an added bonus. All of the rocks in the mining guild respawn two times as fast as the rocks in the regular runescape world. After getting to 60 mining to enter the guild, you should always mine your iron for XP here instead of anywhere else because there won't be any time where you need to pause and wait for the rock to replenish. Snape grass seeds are 2.2k each, and each time you plant snape grass in an allotment patch, you need to use 3 seeds, so it costs 6.6k to plant. Well, an amulet of bounty has a 25% chance of using 1 seed instead of 3 when you're planting any allotment. The amulet costs 450 coins and has 10 charges, so each charge is 45 coins, but it has a saving of 4.4k when you plant snape grass. Cross. At the Winter Toad, you can use a Bruma Torch instead of a Tinderbox when you're lighting the braziers. The torch works as both warm clothing and a Tinderbox. As an Iron Man, creating broad bolts and arrows is a great cheap way to train your fletching level. Broad bolts are great for training your ranged, but broad arrows aren't overly useful. If you take your broad arrows above level 30 wilderness and die, they get converted to two coins each. The coins appear in your gravestone where you died, even if you die from a player, and there's no fee to reclaim the coins if there's under 100k of them in there. So if you have more than 50,000 broad arrows, you should do 50k of them at a time. So this is a good tip to get some money back from fletching on an Iron Man especially. I'm ending this video with two interesting facts about Old School. The Old School snapshot comes from the game as it was on the 10th of August 2007. If the game snapshot was taken only one week earlier, Old School RuneScape wouldn't have clan chats. They were introduced to RuneScape on the 6th of August in 2007, and before this, the only two chats were public and private chat. Of course, Jagex would have likely added clan chats into Old School, but it's still interesting to know. If the snapshot was two weeks earlier, Old School wouldn't have the King's Ransom quest, which means there would be no piety or chivalry, and there probably wouldn't be rigor or augury since they're both the same tier as piety. So that's 10 tricks in Old School that you probably didn't know about. These tips were pretty obscure, and I'm certain that no one out there knew every single one of these tips. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like, and you can subscribe to my channel for more OSRS tips videos. A reminder to check out the link below to get 3 months of free ExpressVPN. Anyways, thanks for watching, and stay safe.